I'm gonna go live now. Okay. And we are live with right, one and only Justin Koro Kaufman. Dude, how have you been? I've been well. I've been doing well. Nah. Yeah, I think last time we met was uh, was here in LA when you guys were running a massive black uh, event, right? Yeah, that's right. Dude, how many years that was? Like three years now? 2013, I want to say, yeah. Fuck. So, Time is flying. I'm getting fast. old. Yeah. <laughs> You're telling me, man. You're telling me. It's yeah. scary it goes. Um, I'm excited for this one because um, I met you... I think we met a couple of times. Uh, we've been talking online for a while too, but really I first heard about you and pretty much all, like the whole um, Massive Black crew when you guys were, you know, starting out and when conceptart.org was forming and uh, <laughs> all that jazz. So um, oh, yeah. a lot of people that are going to listen to us already know who you are, but um, for anyone else who's going to randomly join, you know, I don't want to butcher your background or, or anything. So if you, you know, could kind of walk us through who you sure. are and what sure. you're all about. Um, yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I don't even know, I don't know what I am at this point. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an illustrator, concept artist guy, um, worked in games for, God, 15, 16 years now, long time. Um, worked on a bunch of different stuff. Uh, you know, I, I started uh, started at Studio Massive Black with some friends of mine uh, 12 years ago, 12, 13 years ago, long time ago. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, we were kind of the, I feel like kind of that first round of um, artists that met on the internet and you know, <laughs> started, started that thing. Uh, you know, we uh, started you know, conceptart.org back in the day, and that kind of grew into a thing for a little while, uh, you know, which kind of facilitated the birth of Massive Black. And, uh, you know, so yeah, we, we were kind of doing that stuff, you know, years ago. Um, yeah, it's been, been a good ride, you know. I don't know, I'm, I'm, not, the best, I'm not the best at uh, touting my accolades, I feel like. Uh, <laughs> no, you're doing great. Dude, imagine, imagine this this whole online debacle we have right now is just like being in a, in a coffee shop and drinking really delicious coffee, but instead <laughs> you're just sitting in front of a computer and me asking you, can you paint? <laughs> can you please paint where we, where we're streaming live? Good, good, way, good way of seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> just envision that sort of situation we're like in this, you know, retro looking you know, coffee shop is like it's, you, you can you can smell that you know barn wood, uh, you know the smell of grinded coffee and everything, and just like a little chatter in the background. Um, no, it's I, just I you know, like we're online. Spread <laughs> right now. It's, uh, yeah. Oh uh, no, it's just like, dude, it's good. Um, yeah, you, you guys are pretty much responsible for for one of the biggest. Um, concept art forum that is that was out there for for like forever um yes. i remember yeah. when i was starting uh it was conceptart.org cg talk and cgen those mm -hmm. are just like real three places where you would go and try to find feedback and out of those three you know cgen was basically just speed speed painting yeah, uh, yeah. Thread. Nothing else. Like nobody <laughs> cared about anything else. You would post something, nobody would just like reply, whatever. Like, eh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's all about the speed painting thread. Um, but I think concept art was uh, like to go to place, right? That was it, it. Just blew up. I remember, like, yeah, really, really quickly. I, I mean, you know, I, I think it was kind of just facilitated by. You know, I mean, art is such an isolating thing, and um, you know, it, when you know when the, when the when the concept you know first started getting kicked around, you know, it was like, oh well, you know, we all know each other via you know the internet or kind of casual, you know, meetings or whatever, and you know, would it be great to like meet up and you know shop, you know, swap advice and you know talk art or whatever? And 
I mean, I, I think everyone was like pretty surprised at how that took off. You know, I mean, it, it, it started very industry centric and it was, you know, game concept artists. I mean, pretty specifically, but <laughs> after a while, I mean, you know, a couple years in, it was like, you know, I started seeing a lot of book cover illustrators and, and people that, you know, just picture makers in general, you know, fine artists, shit like that. Uh, all kind of started flocking there because it was a place that you could discuss representational art, you know? Yeah. And, I don't know, man. It was it was good times, you know. We we I made some great friends off of that site. We had a lot of really great experiences with it. Good times, you know. Good times. Yeah. What 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 got you started? Like, what was the reason for you guys to to really so, open up the forums? All, I mean, it, you know, I, I gotta give credit. I mean, it was it was all Jason Manley's doing. You know, uh, he had I met him. My first job was at Shaba Games working on extreme sports stuff. Mm -hmm. And back in 2001, yeah, 2001, he came in and interviewed. Uh, he was working down south at the time with, uh, God, who the fuck are they? Justin Sweet and all those guys. Right. Um, why, why is the name escaping me now? I don't know. It's been too many all years. The, all the savages from the south. Yeah, those guys. But he, he'd been working down there. We got his portfolio, and I mean, it was really impressive. We hadn't, I mean, I'd never seen digital work like that before, you know. Mm -hmm. So we, we brought him in, interviewed, and, uh, you know, we, we kind of became friends uh, and, you know, talked over the years. He'd gone to school at, uh, at Ringling, and uh, he'd gone to school, like, it, 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 he was in a pretty amazing class because, I mean, at the, at the same time he was going there, like Andrew was there, uh, Andrew Jones, Kevin Llewellyn, um, Sean Barber, Carl Dobsky. I thought it was just a shit ton of people that were going there. At Fucking the time. savages. Like, That's what they yeah, are. They all just kind of ended up in the, you know, working in the industry. And so, I mean, it was after, it was, it was probably about six months after uh, he'd gone down and interviewed with us. We didn't end up hiring him, hmm. but... Uh, he kind of, you know, we, we kept in loose contact and he reached out to me one day and was like, hey, man, you know, we, I know all these people, you know, that, that I went to school with, you, you know, people that you went to school with. Wouldn't it be great if, you know, we started this website where we could all talk art together? And I mean, that's really kind of where it was born out of. And I mean, I was at the time, I, mean, I, was, I was living out in Oakland and, you know, pretty, pretty isolated uh, from other artists. Uh, you know, in, in my area. So I was pretty into it. You know, I, I was, you know, I was down to do it. So we started doing it and it just kind of grew out of that. I, I mean, it, it, there was, I, I mean, for me, there was never any plan for me. I mean, I, I'm sure everyone had their, their separate motivations on mm -hmm. this thing. I was just stoked to be able to meet other artists and artists that I'd known and oh shit, you know, John Foster replied to my fucking post. Holy shit. You know, <laughs> there was a lot of that. And it was, it was really cool. It was exhilarating because I had just never been able to talk to illustrators of that caliber before, uh, in such a free format. Yeah. I mean, so, those, those were the times where there was no Facebook nor YouTube. It was, it was all before all that. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this was the first time a lot of these people were meeting other artists. I remember when I first got on the internet, you know, I, I was kind of a caveman in, in, in art school. I didn't, I didn't have a computer or anything. And so I literally, like, I, I got my first game job and I didn't even know how to turn on a computer or anything. I, I worked there for a couple of weeks. I kept like, I would hold the power button to turn the computer off, you know, mm -hmm. until, until finally like the IT guy was like, no, no, you tell the computer to shut down, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, I was, I was pretty much like a fucking, you know, caveman, uh, you know, concerning all of that stuff. So it, it was, it was a big, uh, shed a lot of light on a lot of stuff for me. I mean, I learned so much the first couple of years. I mean, even just, you know, the practicals of digital painting and, you know, how people do it and all of that shit. I had no fucking idea. So it was, it was a really good experience. And I mean, that kind of facilitated the workshop thing, right? So yeah. before we knew it, we had, you know, 15, 20,000 people on this site. We're like, holy crap. I can't believe all these people showed up. One day Jason calls and is like, hey, man, uh, what do you think would happen if we announced that we were doing like a workshop or something? Do you think we could get enough people to show up that would like cover the cost of the trip? You know, that was the, that was the, the motivation for that. 
And he's like, you know, where would you want to do it? You know, we could do Paris or Amsterdam or whatever, you know. And I was like, Amsterdam. We should do Amsterdam. It was fun. <laughs> fun party. Fun. Good, good place. Yeah, I felt, of course. Like, even, if the, even if the workshop was a failure, we could just, you know, party and, you know, forget all of it. So we went out there and, and to much to our surprise, I mean, we had like 100 people show up to that first workshop and it was fucking insane. And none of us had really met each other in person before. I, I, I mean, I'd never met uh, Llewellyn. I'd met Andrew only once. Uh, I'd never met Knox or HPX or, you know, any of these other, Alexi, you know, any of the, the European guys, Bangle. You know, all of a sudden we went over there and we're meeting all these dudes that we knew online and it was just this fucking explosion. I mean, when, when we first met uh, Knox and HPX, and, you know, the, the soup guys, uh, this is so nerdy. But we ended up, we were in Paris for a couple days before we, we went to Amsterdam. And uh, we ended up, <laughs> this is so nerdy. We never, I mean, we were just so stoked to be around each other and hanging out and like swapping. <laughs> techniques and all that shit we went to the soup and hung out and would hang out all night and draw and just oh so when you're doing this how do you do that you know there was there was a screen up that we had photoshop going where people would take turns on photoshop and we would kind of watch and and uh you know draw i was drawing in my sketchbook and showing you know the guys how i you know did the ink stuff or whatever else and it, it was such a fucking crazy thing we, we didn't sleep we stayed up the whole night the first night and, you know, the morning comes and we're like, holy crap, man, we were up all night just like talking art and, you know, fucking nerding out. And so next day, you know, we hang out all day. Everyone's tired because they didn't sleep the night before. The evening rolls around and we're like, hey, what should we do? Let's go back to Le Soup. And so we ended up going back and did the same thing twice where we hung out <laughs> right again and swapped notes and, you know, learned off of each other. And it was just, it was just a really incredible experience because I'd never been around other artists that were so dedicated to this thing the same way that I was and were so um, just, you know, completely governed by it. So, I, I, you know, we met Marco there. Uh, that, that was like a kind of a, a lucky, lucky shot. He had just, we hadn't talked to him. No one had talked to him in months. And then we were in Paris and uh, he popped up on Manly's I Am. And Manly's like, yo, you know, meet us in Amsterdam. So then fucking Marco shows up. So, you know, when we got to Amsterdam, it was it was a pretty wild experience. I mean, that, that was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. What year was that? That was 2004. That was April oh. 2004. Yeah, a long time ago. I was just starting. <laughs> <laughs> I was just uh, just exploring you yeah. know, uh, the whole idea of, you know, conceptart.org and, and everything. Yeah, there was, uh, when I joined the concept art forums, I remember, you know, just the energy and how many how many artists were posting there and that was you know for me and i guess for a lot of artists that were not in us uh, or in you know <laughs> art center specifically that was really the place to learn i mean yeah. you, you would you would go to um you know you could go to art schools and you know learn traditional art in most cases uh you know back in 2004 i don't think that there were that many schools that would teach you digital art at all no, it was a different thing, man. I mean, when I was going to art school, you know, I went I went to art school from 97 to 99. Or almost uh, like, uh, no, I, went, I, I think it was there until 2000, early 2000. And, you know, I mean, they taught, like, Illustration 3 was mm -hmm. the class that taught you digital illustration. And it was this guy that, you know, really, it wasn't, you know, he wasn't, didn't work in it, but uh, he knew how to teach Corel Painter, and, you know, they made it out like it was this big deal. You'll learn Corel Painter in <laughs> Illustration 3 class. And, yeah, I never made it to Illustration 3, actually. Like, I, I dropped out early and, and just ended up working in the industry. And so I, I learned it on my own uh, in the trenches, which I think was a much better way to do it. So, where, you know, that's where I learned that, yeah. you know, maybe Corel Painter wasn't the best thing. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> No, yeah, I, I, I absolutely know what you mean. Uses Corel Painter or any of that, you know. I mean, I just you find your tools that you like. You know, any artist that uses Corel Painter is really good at it. I think I think Milligan Milligan still uses Corel. I want to oh, say. Oh, okay. I think he'd be the only guy I can think of off the top of my head. I mean, I'm sure like the old guy, like Don C. Miller, and you know those guys still probably use Painter. Right. But. Uh, 
Yeah, Milligan's like the only guy that, that that I you know still talk to fairly frequently. That that you know um, that I know still uses Painter. Yeah. Oh, you know, I think John Mueller posted something up recently. He posted on his Facebook where he's like, "I'm using the new Painter. It's awesome." <laughs> So it's, it's all it's all the gray hairs. It's all this gray hairs. That, you know. <laughs> nice, nicely put. I I yeah. remember trying it, and you know, it was it was all right. You know, um, was nothing nothing there. Well, I mean, it, it kind of tried to mimic a little bit of that traditional way of painting, yeah, right, with not... mixer brushes and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a good program for what it was. I I, I feel like for me, the thing that turned me off on it eventually was that it kind of lacked the subtlety that you can find in Photoshop. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's kind of what I started on. You know, I mean, I, I started, you know, like I mentioned, I started working in video games. I mean, literally, I, I, I was trying to get a job at a movie studio. I had a buddy of mine that was working at Tippett at the time. I gave him my portfolio. He shopped it around. A guy over there had worked at a video game studio that he knew was hiring. So long story short, I ended up getting this job from someone I didn't even know. I got a phone call from some guy I'd never spoken to that was like, hey, so I presented your portfolio and you got the job. So you need to go and meet with them, and, you know, discuss the salary and all that. So it was, <laughs> it was a really weird fucking experience, my, my intro into, into this industry. But I mean, I started out, you know, like I said, I, I didn't own a computer. I had no fucking idea how to do any of this shit. And, you know, they they were like, yeah, it's okay. We'll train you up. You know, so uh, my initial, you know, uh, foray into this, you know, they had Corel Painter there. So I started playing with Painter because, you know, I was a traditionally trained painter. And I was like, oh, well, right. this seems like the most, you know, one, one thing. Uh, and also, too, early on, you know, I mentioned that, that uh, Jason Manley had come and uh, interviewed at, at the studio that I was working at. And uh, when he came down there, he gave me a demo of Painter. And he was like, look, this is how we use it down, you know, at, at uh, fuck, where the fuck were they? Was it, why don't I say Black Isle? Is it Black Isle? Is that where they all worked? I don't know. I don't remember. I, I think it was Black Isle. I think it was Black Isle Studios. But yeah, I mean, it, you know, uh, Justin Sweet and Vance Kovacs and, and Kevin Llewellyn and all those guys had that kind of Painter thing going on. Oh, well, I think those guys still use Painter. But, right, um, right. You know, they had that kind of that that really beautiful, you know, kind of Frazetti, you know, painterly technique going on. And so, you know, Manly gave me like kind of a demo on how they were doing things down there. And that set me on my course where I used Painter for a couple of years there. First couple of years that I was doing, you know, uh, digital shit. And then uh, it was the, it was actually it was the Amsterdam workshop when I met Knox and I watched Knox paint in Photoshop that I was like, oh, shit. Well, right. I've been doing it wrong. You know, and so I, I just kind of started adopting uh, the similar approaches that I'd seen Knox and HBX do. And uh, that kind of put me on my path to where, you know, to my current workflow where, you know, I use Photoshop for pretty much everything. Yeah, someone on the chat mentioned that Ryan Church was using or still using. I, I, I don't know if he's still using. He might be on Photoshop now. I don't know. I would have to ask. I I don't know. Would have to yeah. ask him. Um, but yeah, he, he definitely use you used to use uh, Painter for I mean, I, I Star hear the Wars and whatnot. I hear the new one's really good. I mean, I I just for me it just wasn't. I I feel like there came a point where I was like, okay, I'm ready for digital to be digital, and I'm ready for traditional to be traditional. And I like yeah. keeping them separate. Um, you know, the the rules are different, and I'm fine with that. I respect that. The same way oil paint and pencil are different from watercolor right yeah i mean it, it, trying to make a medium uh mimic another medium is is kind of i don't know it's kind of a weird concept if you think about it you know it's, it's like yeah. trying to use watercolor like oil paint which i mean i guess people can do but you know it's it's like using a screwdriver to hammer a nail <laughs> right i mean right tool for the right job i guess yeah of course it's all or, about tools in the end you know and what are you doing it for yourself or or a client, you're just finding the tool that fits the stylistic, uh, you know, paradigm that you want to you want to follow. And um, it, you know, it doesn't really matter what this really is, whether it's Painter or Photoshop or any other shit. You know, it's it's just as long as, as long as it gets approved, right? <laughs> yeah, as long as it gets approved, or as long as it's just uh, delivering exactly what you want to see on the screen. You know, if you're working on your own project or um, you were collaborating with friends or whatever that is. Yeah. Um, so you guys had a workshop in Amsterdam. Was that like 
was was that one of the reasons for massive black that was that like one of the things that got it got so, its inception or what's funny is we kind of started massive black casually uh before that mm -hmm. um so so we had kind of and we're starting this company going on at, at the same time um so so this is actually funny you bring this up i forgot about this when we were there so we had just landed the flagship studios gig right mm -hmm. which uh, um Flagship Studios was a was a studio that started. Uh, it was formed out of Blizzard North back in like late 2003, early 2004. Yeah. Uh, they did Hellgate London. It was a smash success. It changed gaming forever. No, I'm just kidding. It was <laughs> but uh, you know they had they had just broke from Blizzard North, formed. They were you know they got all this Korean funding, and you know the buzz was oh man, what's what's Blizzard I remember North? Remember that? You know. So we had kind of been in contact with them and we'd been talking to them a little bit. And um, yeah, so, so we, we were kind of in, in casual conversation with, you know, they were like, yeah, well, we're trying to do this differently. You know, oh, you guys are an outsourcing studio. You know, and that was, that was back before, I mean, there was really even any outsourcing studios. And they were like, well, we want to try this thing because it seems like, you know, the, the, the next generation of, you know, how games are going to get made. You know, I, I think they were just trying to figure out how to, you know, minimize costs, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we, yeah, so we had that gig kind of going, but it was, we weren't fully in contract yet. But what was funny is anytime we would give demos at the Amsterdam workshop, it was, well, we know that they're making a game about demons. So if you're fucking going to do a demo, draw a demon and we can show them all these demons at the end and maybe we're doing a little bit of work, right? <laughs> <laughs> so little to the audience, you know, as we're Smart. drawing all these demons and monsters and all this shit that like, oh, we were actually kind of doing our homework at the time and, and uh, you know, we'd, we'd take all these pictures of them and, you know, and try to try to capture all the stuff that we were doing. And I mean, in the end, you know, we, we showed it to the flagship and they were like, oh, yeah, this is great. I mean, they might have picked one or two, but I mean, fuck, that was so long ago. I don't even know at this point. But yeah, I mean, so we did have, we, we run a couple jobs, you know, through through Massive Black and, you know, we're kind of like, oh, look, we're kind of doing this. But it, but it hadn't become like a real studio yet. I mean, it didn't become a real studio until the flagship thing became real, which was, uh, you know, later that year. And uh, I mean, it didn't really get real until I mean, I quit my job October of 2004. That was when I quit because I had a cushy, you know, Activision job mm -hmm. at the time. And you know, it, it was funny because nobody wanted to quit their jobs, right? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I mean, I will give I will give Manly credit for that. I mean, he he I mean, he was working contracts, so I give him partial credit. Uh, but I mean, he he stopped working, and you know, it, it kind of took this thing on and you know, was, was harping at us, you know, you got to quit your jobs, you got to quit your jobs. And nobody wanted to quit their jobs because, I mean, it's just like, fuck, you know, you, you, you quit your job, you, you, you know, no more paychecks, right? So, I mean, I, it finally got real in October where it was like, okay, we're in contract now with this flagship thing. It's happening. I was the only, I was, I was the, the main artist in the Bay Area. I mean, everyone else was kind of all over the place, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not, in the bay and since flagship was based in the bay uh you know i was i was their main point of contact so i had to you know go over and meet with them in in the basement of you know their their uh, their engineer's house at the time and and so i mean it just kind of turned into a oh shit i'm working activision i i started kind of phasing it out where i you know i told the guys yeah i, I worked for a studio called shaba games great group of people i mean they, mm -hmm. you know they kind of brought me in and trained me up and I worked there for four years and uh you know as as the the massive black thing started ramping up it was kind of like uh, all right guys well I think I, I want to work contract and then you know oh, I think I'm only going to work four days a week and they were really good to me I mean they were like you know however whatever you want to whatever capacity you want to work we'll, we'll work with you on it so um you know, they, they were really cool about it. But yeah, eventually I kind of phased out and, you know, we started doing the, the MV thing full time and yeah, I never looked back, I guess. Too busy. Yeah. I mean, I remember, I remember, you know, uh, when flagship was out and like, 
I was, yeah, I was just like, that was, I think, the first, one of the first games that actually did outsourcing. Yeah. And, start, and yeah. started really the outsourcing trend in, in video games, really. Because there was no other video games. I was working at Crytek at that time, and I remember mm -hmm. we, we had those discussions, like, oh, those guys are outsourcing, so maybe we should, you know? And it they eventually started so doing that as well. It Not specifically like for concept, concept, but yeah. Yeah, nobody had really fucked with it. And I mean, you know, I, it's, it's funny. I have mixed feelings on it, man. I mean, because I, I feel like outsourcing did transform the industry in, in, a, in a pretty fundamental way. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I, I don't think games could have gotten as big as they did uh, on the budgets that yeah. they're run up otherwise. You know, and I mean, it, it, it is, it's weird. I mean, there's a lot of bad things that happened with it, too. Uh, but you know, I, I guess looking back, I can't, I can't complain too much. I mean, it kept me fed for, you know, still keeps me fed. So yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, outsourcing has definitely changed, uh, everything because like, I don't think a lot of people still realize that a lot of games that you see right now, even though the game studios will have hundred, 200, 500 people, um, they would, they would have thousands or, you know, another hundreds of people that are basically outsourced. You know, all mm -hmm. the small textures or little asses that are in the corners and like really meaningless shit that's on the screen that just has to be there for fidelity. Like normally no one in the house would do that because that would just be too much work. Uh, you, you might have like six uh, texture artists or let's say six modelers for like the foreground or background assets. They all focus on the major things like the hero objects and, and all that. All the other shit like fucking paper clips and benches well, and you know, shit like it's that. It's just you not know? cost effective, right? It's not yeah. cost effective for people to have, you know, a burn rate of, you know, three CG artists that are just sitting there making paper clips, right? Yeah, exactly. That, that was really kind of, and you know, I mean, we kind of came up on that too. Uh, we hit on something that, that was, that was kind of an interesting thing that, you know, a lot of times smaller to middle range studios, they can't afford, you know, a really good concept artist yeah. for the full length of a, of a project. You know, a lot of times on any project, you know, concept artists are really only busy, super busy for the first, you know, three to six months of a project. And then after that, it's like, all right, well, you know, they're fixing textures or, you know, do, doing little things. But, you know, most of the heavy lifting is done in the front end. Yeah. And so you know, we kind of found that that slotted in really nicely for us because, I mean, you know, studios didn't necessarily have to hire, you know, five or six concept artists when they could just kind of lean on us and we got a whole team that can, you know, crank through shit way faster, you know? Um, so that, that was, that was, uh, something that we found, you know, it was, it was our wheelhouse pretty early on. I feel like. Yeah, no, I mean, one of the things that it definitely started apart from just outsourcing is that there, there's way more freelance artists than there used to be before. You can only have um, like the best of the best in the industry would possibly be able to freelance for a studio. And I'm talking like caliber of Craig Mullins or Dylan Cole, you know, like really mm -hmm. the most amazing artists that are, that are out there. Um, when I was, when, you know, when you guys were starting massive, like that, that wasn't really a thing, like doing a, doing it, whether it's an outsourcing studio or freelance, like you, you, you would have to be in a studio in majority of cases. So that was definitely like a trend that started and I could totally see how it's, how it's all connected, you know, where's, um, so I have a question. Where's, where's, um, where's massive black right now for you guys, you know, how, how are you guys doing? Cause it obviously started there and, and it went through like a road of, Fucking shitload of projects you guys did in, in the meantime, you know? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, you know, it. I mean, Massive Black is kind of finally at a place where I think um, it's it's sustainable, you know? It, it's it's not as crazy as it was. I, I, I think, I mean, past couple of years, I you know, with, with the second kid especially, I mean, I, I think it's it's... For me and, you know, and, and Mel, at least, I mean, it, it's turned into a lot of just trying to, like, turn it into something that, like, works on all of our terms. Right. You know? And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it's finally kind of, you know, moved. I mean, too, we've been around for long enough now to where, you, you know, we're, we work with, we do the type of work that we're good at, that we want to do. Right. Um, 
you know, there's, there's a lot less, you know, oh, I've got to, got to do all the art for this mobile game so it can pay, you know, these people or, you know, anything like that. It's, I mean, we're, we run a lot slimmer and a lot leaner now, uh, which I like a lot. Um, and it, it kind of facilitates better for, you know, what we do. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, Massive Black is, is actually doing better than I feel like it, it, it ever has in a lot of ways. You know, um, we're working on some great stuff right now. Can't can't talk about it. Uh, <laughs> fucking uh, NDAs. Yeah, fucking but NDAs, yeah, doing, doing some, you know, doing doing some pretty cool stuff. I mean, you know, yeah, kind of outside of the box, which is you know where I like to be, typically. No, you guys, <laughs> you guys definitely made a brand for yourself. So you know, anytime you ask Massive Black, I, 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 majority of people know what that is. You know, they know what you're. That's like super flattering. I mean, I, I, I'm super flattered by that just because I feel like, I mean, especially the past like five, six years, I mean, we, we just, we don't advertise a lot, you know, we don't yeah. really do much. I mean, we, you know, we are, our, our, I'd like to think that our work speaks for ourselves, for itself, you know, and that we, we don't, you know, pe people come to us because they, they know our work and they know that we're, we're performers and that we, we do what we, we say. And, uh, you know, it's, it's it's been great. I mean, honestly, I, I feel like the, over the years, we've definitely honed in on, you know, more specifically kind of the types of jobs that we like to do and, you yeah. know, that, that we're good at. And, uh, you know, that, that's made things a lot easier. I mean, you know, when you, when you start a business, I, I mean, when we started Massive Black, I mean, we'd all worked at video game studios. So we didn't know how to run anything. You know, we didn't know how anything except a video game studio ran. Right. And so early on, I mean, we tried to run it like a video game studio and, you know, just, I, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's nobody's fault. It's just like, you know, you do what you know. Right. But, yeah. uh, you know, over the years you start to realize it's just like, well, we're not really set up like a video game studio. We're not a video game studio. We never were, you know? And, and while there, there were, there were always attempts to like, Oh, maybe we can make this game or maybe we can try to do this. It's like, you know, we never had, incredibly necessary pieces that are, that are essential in assembling an actual game or doing anything like that. You know, it, it was, it was more, it, you know, I, I mean, Massive Black was always founded. It was always about the art. It was always centered on the art. And I mean, I think over the years, that's, that's been something that we've, we've been able to grow into a little bit better, if that makes sense. It, it does. And one thing that, you know, you realize very quickly is that when you're an artist, you're not really a businessman either. You know, Absolutely. that's something we, we haven't finished Stanford, you know, school of business or went to Harvard and, and learned from the best, like how to actually run business that you have to have a lawyer, you have to talk with the right people and make right business choices that no, are not necessarily the choices that you would do as an artist, you know, because so you feel pure and... <laughs> That actually, I got a really funny story about that. So back in I don't know, like 2006 maybe, um, one one of my really good friends uh, was going to Stanford Business School. Got it, got accepted in Stanford. Super smart guy. Um, he's like a like a pharmaceutical exec now or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, at, you know, at the time, uh, he was going to Stanford Business School, which is you know a very competitive, prestigious you know program or whatever. And so um, I was like, hey, man, well, you know, you, you're doing all this business theory. Shit. Why, don't, <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you come in and take a look at our books, you know? And, and you know, he's a fucking old friend of mine. I, mean, I grew up with him back in Texas, you know? Right. So uh, he comes over and, you know, we open up our books and we let him kind of take a look at it. And and then <laughs> and then we end up having this meeting where he's just like basically like, okay, so here's your trajectory and here's where you're going to be in six months, right? And you guys are going to be like, Deep, deep, deep underwater in six months. <laughs> you, guys, you guys' business plan is fucked, right? And um, you he know, opens we, book and like, what? What, dude, what no, in the fuck? It was like, you know, I mean, it, it was really funny because there was the, we were running this thing on all these like weird misconceptions. You know, early on we were like, okay, well, you know, the for the flagship contract, for instance, like like the the big chunk of the contract was three D work, right? Yeah. So and for a long time, we operated under the assumption that, like, oh, we make all our money off of 3D, right? My boy comes in, starts fucking doing P&Ls, and realizes, he's like, nah, man, you guys lose a shit ton of money on 3D because you got all these fucking 
American artists here that you're paying, us, you know, these high salaries for making this stuff. Uh, you know, where you really make your money is on concept. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny about that is for like, I mean, a year or so, like concept had been kind of the redheaded stepchild of Massive Black, where, you know, we always got shit on and it was always, oh, fuck the concept. Everyone's always <laughs> concept. Yeah, and then fuck we what we do like, best. Shit. We've been paying the bills all this time. Go right. figure. But, you know, um, you know, classic, classic hubris. Uh, you know, we, we're like, no, 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 that's not how the industry works. You don't know how this industry works. We'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't. And, you know, there was lots of bad things happened. And, you know, you make we make lots of mistakes and you fail hard. And you fail worse and worse than you ever possibly thought you could. You, you fail in ways that, like, you're embarrassed to tell your family because you don't want them worrying about you. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? I, I, I feel like that was the thing with Massive Black is it's just like, you get used to, you, are, you, are you familiar with that that uh, that Charlie Kaufman movie, Schenectady, New York? No, I haven't seen it. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a great fucking movie. And it, it's, I'm going to have to it, see it. The really the the sum of it is it's about the artistic process and artistic obsession, right? And there's this thing that keeps happening in the movie where um, the guy wakes up and his house is just on fire, and he just it, like. But what's interesting is it, it, he doesn't freak out about it after a while. It's it's like a, it's a very dreamlike movie. I mean, it feels like a dream. But but the the analogy in there that stuck with me is just like. Massive Black taught me to get used to my house being on fire. You That's know what I mean? Much running business, isn't it? Yeah, dude, you just get used to it, man. Because in the beginning, yeah, oh god, you could stress out about any fucking one thing, right? But there comes a point where things are just so fucked and you're in so deep that you just wake up and you're like, "Well, house is on fire. Guess I'll go to work." You know what I mean? Because there's nothing else you can do. What are you gonna do? You're gonna crawl in the wall? That's not gonna fix it. You know, I have so many mornings. Well, I'll, uh, I, would hope to grab, I would hope to grab an extinguisher, you know, and yeah, no, to totally. <laughs> I, I, have, I have so many memories of mornings before going to work, standing there in the shower, and just trying to make sense of how fucked my life was. <laughs> you know what I mean? And just like, oh my god, like it's just, you know, but but you know, the, the silver lining to that is is it makes you it makes you resourceful. And yeah. it, it, it gives you grit and it teaches you that like, Hey, you know what? Like sometimes things are so fucked that you can't stop <laughs> because if you stop, I mean, I don't know what happens after that, you know? So, I mean, it, I, I feel like, it, you know, massive black has been a really great experience for me with that. I mean, it, it, it taught me that you can dig deeper than you ever would have thought. And that's not even just on a specific project, but it's on steering the ship and yeah. feeding people and, you know, kind of taking care of these things. It's like, fucking Christ, man. I mean, and, and you know, and, and to, to touch back on what you said, I mean, we're artists, man. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm my happiest when I'm sitting in my studio making pictures. That's my safe place. You know, yeah, you don't uh, want to deal with QuickBooks and lawyers. And... These meetings and, you know, going over budgets or trying to figure out what money's going to look like in six months or, you know, things like that. It's like, you know, these aren't things that I signed on for. And, yeah. you know, there, there are things that you, I mean, there are these inevitables that you have to deal with, but I mean, they don't come naturally. There is a huge curve on it. And, you know, if you're, if you're fucking lucky, you know, you, you can, you can fall on your good graces and, and end up okay somehow, you know? Yeah, it definitely learn, uh, it definitely teaches you to be really resourceful, resourceful. And, uh, and the truth is you either, you either succeed or you learn, you know, like every failure, you get you get through any whether it's big or not a big or small failure it's still sort of like a learning process you you learn a lesson okay this is not the way you run it this is not the way you do it um and then you try to find you know the resources or you try to find the the answers and that's how you learn that's how you you know grow and and progress that's how it basically you learn to become a businessman really because you, I feel this like is so many times you're gonna run into those issues right well, you know, it's, it's funny because when you start out, you know, every, everyone like, God, people are just so fucking idealized. Everything is black and white. Yeah. <laughs> Always. You start a business and you start seeing the gray in between. And after a while, you just start realizing that like, ah, shit, like you run a business, you got to live in the gray, man. You know what I mean? You're living in those shades of gray. It's not black and white. Nothing is, you know, and it, and it it's interesting because it changes your whole philosophy about everything. 
you know, I mean, even even to touch on the political landscape, you know, and, and you know, the, this election and you know, all that shit. It's like you see people that they, they just want it one way, you know, and that goes for everybody. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm as I am so like I, I trip out so hard on, on the people that are just like, oh, Obama's completely ruined this country, he's destroyed everything because I'm like, man, have you ever fucking run anything? You know what it's like to try to compromise <laughs> with people? You know what it's like. You run a company and then then fucking think about being a, Try running a the leader world. of the world. United <laughs> States. I can't even fucking imagine what that's like. And yes, you're gonna make enemies. And yes, you know, at the end, everyone's gonna piss at you because you gotta you gotta make everybody kind of happy, right? That's the way it fucking works, man. Yeah, I mean, everyone so, has different opinions, and the the, the 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 worst part about it is that some people just become really militant about the, you know. Mm-hmm. Like well, I know, have my own opinion. Fuck you. I don't care what you think. I'm gonna actually kill you because you have different opinion too. So that's well, you know, the biggest I think, problem I there. Think it's, I think it's great to have convictions, and I think it's great to be idealistic about things you believe in. But in the same time, you have to be realistic about yeah. the compromise and the fact that like the world just does not fucking work like that. And if if you want to fucking walk through the world and say I think things should be this way, eventually you're gonna be a fucking crazy guy talking to yourself in the corner because that's not how <laughs> the fucking world works. You know, <laughs> yep, yeah, for sure. I feel like running a business has been singly the most educational experience for me on that. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I can I can agree with you better. I mean, we've been we've been running uh, Lawrence Square for almost a year now, and mm-hmm. the amount of shit you got to go through every day. It's like, oh, yeah. oh, wait, you have to have an accountant? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, that's a fun one, isn't it? <laughs> uh. Oh, no, it's just like you learn about those little fees and the, the fucking little, little nicks and, and grannies, like little fucking things that are hidden there in the tax. law. And then and then IRS just no, knocks to your door and like, yeah. hey, you guys oh. pay taxes yet? I'm like, tax? what? Taxes? What, what is? What is? Why, why do I owe all this money in taxes? I mean, <laughs> that's fucking crazy, man. Like taxes are a good one, man. I mean, I mean, you know, of course. I feel like any any artist that goes into business is going to fall into that trap at some point because yeah. like, you know, you're gonna get a payday and then you're gonna be like, holy shit, I got all this money, and then you don't realize that like you really only get half of it, right? Yeah, the other money. half just kind of goes away. It's already gone. It's already just fucking out the window, right? But you know, it's also it, it's so funny because you end up like. I have so many like crazy experiences with that where it's just like, oh, we owe all this money to the IRS, and you know, which which we don't anymore. You know, just to be clear, but yeah. you know, there's a point. You know, early on, it's like you know, you make these fucking insane mistakes, and you know, I I remember there's a point where you know someone was like complaining to me about like a five hundred dollar parking ticket they got, and I was just like, man, I I can't even go into how much I owe right now because <laughs> like it's embarrassing and it would change how you look at me forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, so, it's like they're fucking you in the ass, but not really, but you still feel that way. <laughs> well, it, it, it's funny to hear someone like complain about a $500 parking ticket where you're just like, motherfucker, like you don't even know, like, you have no idea what that is. You know what I mean? You're complaining yeah. about this thing that's like, yeah, it's a problem, but it's not like a fucking, you know, I might have to flee the country problem. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, There's I mean, a... it's it's hard, man. I mean, artists, I, I, I don't know a single artist that didn't fall into the tax trap at some point. You know what I mean? I, I'm <laughs> you serious. You get to. I mean, some some are, you know, you, you realize you have to pay taxes. So when you get that net amount, you know, like, okay, let's assume the half of it kind of goes away and kind of starts exactly. start with that. I know a lot of people don't do that, which is, I guess, like the well, you know, shittiest that, that mistake you can make. Down. That's my advice to anyone out there doing this, just starting out in this. Is you know when you get, when you get that paycheck, just just half it. Yeah, just yeah. Half it, because that's but really there's like you're... when you when you start a company, for instance, like what kind of what kind of paperwork you're gonna do? Like what yeah. kind of what kind of corporations is gonna be? Is it gonna be C corp, S corp, LLC, well, or twenty other options? You know, and like each of them have different laws. Each of them require different filing, and you. Yep. And you have to like categorize yourself as a as a specific company and pay specific taxes. And if you don't pay one, then you have to pay, to pay another. And like, and you quickly realize you can do you can do like there's like those online services like Gusto where they help you with that. But you quickly realize like there is so much small shit that yeah. it might cost you thousands of dollars, and you don't even know. You know, especially yeah. when when you're running a business that that is you know it's it's not like you're doing it yourself, especially when you do it with <laughs> others, right? 
It's like well, that's one, scary, right? Because then you have people that are kind of relying on you not to fuck up, and that's, and vice versa. It's almost like marriage, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we're joking around with Ash and and Andrew. Like we're almost like you know, it's like a secret gay marriage there, financial mm -hmm. gay marriage going on. You know, like yeah. a threesome. Yeah. Because like really, if any any of us fuck fuck up, then we're all in shit. <laughs> and let me tell you, man. Yeah, that is painful too, uh, dude. Partner, There's a lot of trust you have to build for sure. Partnership is like harder than a marriage, harder than a marriage. Mm -hmm. And ending a partnership is totally like a fucking divorce, man. I mean, it's, <laughs> it is the exact same thing. And it's funny because I mean, we've, you know, I've, I've been down that road, and uh, it's funny because when you deal with the lawyers and shit, they're like, oh yeah, this is exactly like a divorce. Like, I mean. Yeah. This, this, the, the two are comp like intrinsically linked. I mean, it's, it's essentially the same experience, you know, except you're not tax, fighting. Tax wise, it's almost the same, isn't it? I mean, you, 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 you have to almost like divide, you know, the wealth between the partners and make sure that, you know, who is, the who's more guilty and who isn't, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's hard. Um, it's, it's really hard. And I mean, yeah. it, you know, I, I definitely, I, over the years, I'll be up front. I mean, I, I definitely didn't have the best luck with that, you know. But uh, Hey, but you learned that way, you know. I mean, the mistakes learned, you make, uh, it's, a, it's a learning lesson for you. And, you uh, know, looking back, it's like it's no hard feelings, you know. I, I don't have any resentment yeah. towards anyone, you know, at this point. It's like... I think it affects your life in a way that it's actually better for you to fail miserably, uh, especially on the business side, because... Then whenever you you start new business or you you're getting into contracts with you know with studios, you think about it differently. You know you look at yourself as not just an artist that oh, I I'm just like I'm just happy to work. You you, you look at the worth that you're uh, bringing to the project that you know how much really worth you are. Especially when you start to realize okay I'm getting so many offers right now or mm -hmm. this is going so well. Why am I still getting you know fucked in the ass because i'm just like accepting everything as it is you know mm -hmm. and that's when you start to see the difference between just an artist that works for the industry and basically kind of accepts everything that that goes like oh the studio is giving me contract i'm gonna sign it because it's just uh there's no way to negotiate when you get to the the the, the world of negotiation negotiating contract especially when you're on the on the other end and you see it from like both sides Absolutely. you start to realize like that's not really that's not that's not necessarily a true you know even if you're working with the biggest studio you still have room to oh. talk and it's not like you're talking to production designer or, or art director that wants to hire you they just want to hire you because they want a great artist for the project you're mm -hmm. talking with a lawyer that yeah. has nothing to do with you know with whether you're going to work or not unless you have like really unreasonable expectations you know yeah yeah totally so there's a lot of things you learned that way, um, oh. for sure. Yeah, for sure, dude. It's, it's an education in and of itself. Yeah. Um, cool. Hey, uh, let's let's jump into some questions. There's uh, there's quite a few here on the chat. I haven't been following the chat fully. Uh, um, John was with us a little bit. I'm uh, here to looking at the chat at all. Where, where is the chat? I'm gonna I'm gonna read those questions to you. Okay. Don't worry. Um, all right. So first question here was, uh, why did Concept Art Org lose pop popularity? What's next big thing? Art Station? <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably not the best guy to answer this. Uh, what? I, okay. You know what? I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, I think ConceptArt.org lost popularity because we tried to monetize it, and right. I, I got uncomfortable. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, and I mean, I think that, that's what happened to. Um, to quite a few forums when they started doing that. It's just like, oh, it's free and now it isn't. Like, what? Well, you know, you know what happened is is I mean, it was just a series of unfortunate events. And right. you know, I mean I, I think I think conceptart.org was a moment in time. It was yeah. a beautiful thing. That's how uh, I see it too. I, it was, you know just, what I'm it was a yeah, thing of a time. I, I also you know I also don't put it entirely on the monetization thing. You know, I mean it was also around the time that Facebook came to exist, which I mean, changed the dynamic a lot on that. Yeah, you know, uh, all of a sudden you have this other thing where, you know, it was, it was a broader base of artists. I feel like it was less speci less specified as you know, entertainment industry or that type right. of thing. I mean, I think I think that changed. 
I think the internet just kind of changed. I mean, it's it's funny because I was, I was talking to a guy recently who's a, he's a game designer and uh, had had a very similar experience to me where, you know, he came up, you know, back in the day on, uh, you know, very involved in forums and, you know, that, that type of thing. And we were talking about it and we're just like, man, it's, it sucks because like forums just don't really exist in the same way they did. You know, that that, yep. that community just isn't what it was. And it's it's a bummer, you know. I mean, there are, there are factors that, that are, you know, involved in it. But, yeah, it's kind of sad, you know. I miss it. But, yeah, uh, I miss it too. I mean, that's where I learned, really. I mean, that's where my skills are coming from, just from the feedback of other artists. That's really well, non-existent anymore. I mean, I don't want to talk shit or anything, but, you know, I, I also feel like, you know, a lot of these newer sites, they, they don't have the community is the thing. You know, I, I mean, I think the thing that was interesting about conceptart.org was that there was a community involved. The forums were very active. And, you know, I mean, that was the glue that held it together. Really, it wasn't the art. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. You know, yeah. and I think uh, ArtStation is proof of that, right? Because there's a shit ton of great art on there. I mean, there's more than I can, you know, process. But it's more of a portfolio side, really. That's exactly. what I mean. That's I what mean, Leo was even uh, exactly. alluring to himself. You know, it's it's more of like we wanted to build sort of a site that you know you don't have to go anywhere else to have a portfolio. And for that, really. and for that, it functions great. Yeah, you know? exactly. I, mean, I, I think I think it, it, it performs that that function perfectly. But yeah, I mean, it's it's not a concept art org. It's not trying to be, you know. It, it's uh, and I don't know. I don't know what would be the next big thing, you know. I mean, I, I've seen. It's hard to tell. It's funny, man, because you get rumblings and bubblings of people. Man, I miss concept org, or I miss CG Hub, or any of these. But nobody's really been able to crack that nut and make something that <laughs> has filled that spot, really. You know, people try. I don't know. I, don't know. I, f I think we're getting used to, you know, with smartphones and everything, we're getting used to so much information flow that mm -hmm. our attention spans are becoming really smaller and smaller by, by the day. Dude, and the world I, is a different mm, place. It's a different place. I mean, when yeah. we started comicguard.org, there was no such thing as a smartphone. YouTube didn't exist. Yeah, you would go and sit there for, you know, an hour because you were interested in topics and threads and you would, you know, read exactly. through comments. Now, majority of people don't even read the articles themselves. They look at the headline and sort of get yep. their, their news information from headlines. I do it myself, they, too. They check their stream, right? They just <laughs> right. check their stream. Oh, right. what's, what, what's the good headline? Just, there's there's so, so much information out there, you know. And Facebook is sort of, it's sort of like a community, really. I mean, you have uh, Facebook groups. and um, mm -hmm. But I, I have a feeling and, and you know, it, it, it speaks the truth to, you, to what you were saying is that with appearance of Facebook and the amount of information that flows through our life these days, it's like you're really having such a low in, um, attention span that you're not really caring to really respond to what you see because there's just too much of it, you know? Yeah. Uh, back in the days, you would go to forums because not only you would, you would look for feedback, and people still do that. Like People post work because they want to get feedback in the majority of, of cases. You know, there are ob obviously artists that want to do it and sh just showcase, oh, this is how awesome I am. Um, but there are artists that genuinely look for feedback, right? Um, mm -hmm. But they're not getting it because majority of people, people these days are just, there's so much information out there. It's like, am I allocating my time resource in the right it's places, kind of, it's right? It's an interesting thing, man. Like, I feel like the internet does this to everything. It kind of desensitizes right. you, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, dude, I, I think, like, dude, porn is a great example. Right? <laughs> of course. Because, like, back, back when I was a kid, right, you know, porn had music, and it was like, oh, there was, like, a story to it. And, you know, you had to go over to your friend's house, and maybe his big brother would rent you a porn movie for your sleepover, or, you know, someone's parents had porn movies. But they were, like... It was a movie where people fucked, right? Yeah, and you but, would have that on the VH, v, VHS tape, and you would watch it every time. Think it would about what never the get old. That, man. The internet now, it's like porn is just this insane monster that's just, and, and, and porn isn't like what it, it, porn, there's no music in porn anymore. It's like, you, you know what I'm saying? It's just like fucking insane. Uh, but but it, it's the exact same fucking thing. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. It's like too much of it desensitizes you to where, you know, it, that doesn't do it for you anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the, the old way just doesn't do it anymore. I need to see, you know, someone 
pissing on someone or, you know, I, I need to see like a giant stream of artwork or huge wall with nothing but crazy paintings on it that I can stream through. And, you know, it's, it's just a different world. It's a different yeah, world. It is. Too much ice cream. Too much ice cream, man. It makes people's eyes gloss over. It, it, it's, it's funny, man, because, you know, now that I got kids, you know, you're constantly kind of looking at things at the world through the lens of like, man, I'm raising kids to like live in this world. You know what I mean? This <laughs> Children aren't you curious like the, when you're gonna tell them hey back in my days there was like if, if you oh. wanted to visit a friend you would have to call him and expect him to be at home and if you if he wasn't then you wouldn't contact with him yeah, or when you made a they, meeting they, on, they, in the they, city they your friend's phone number <laughs> right and if someone had zeros in the phone numbers you're like every time you would call like this motherfucker with yeah. all the zeros <laughs> with, with the rotary dial. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. that? What are you talking about? No iPads? What? Yeah, totally, totally. My, my totally. Kids just, no concept of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, where did you go to art school? And uh, did you do art before that? So yeah, man, I went, I went to art school. I, I did two and a half years at Academy of Art. I guess they call it University now. Academy of Art University in San Francisco. I, I right. studied traditional illustration there. Um, before that, I mean, yeah, I, I did, I done art, I did art my whole life. I mean, I, th I think that's probably like everybody's story, right? I started drawing when I was a little kid and my parents encouraged it. And, you know, I was, I was the, the guy in class that, you know, oh, he's the little artist that would draw the fucking posters and all that <laughs> shit. Uh, you know, I, I got my first job working, you know, doing production stuff, uh, before I ever went to art school. I, I, my first job was in 96 doing, uh, character design work for, uh, CD-ROM, educational CD-ROMs for the Texas School of the Deaf. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I, before that, I did graffiti. You know, I was a graffiti writer for many years. Your, uh, your traditional art is insane, dude. The paintings you're uh, doing now, thanks, holy dude. fuck. I mean, that's where my art is, man. I mean, that, that's always, you know, that's where it started and that's where it ends for me. You know, I mean, the digital stuff is is a means to make money. You know, I mean, it's... I, I love digital. I, I love being able to, to mock things up. I think digital is unparalleled when you're talking about, you know, how to do preparatory work for a painting right. or, up or, you know, whatever. But yeah, for me, man, I mean, I'm just, I'm a tactile guy. I like getting my hands dirty. I like painting with brushes and that type of stuff. I mean, it's how I learn. And, you know, I mean, I, no matter how many years you sit in front of a computer, I, I mean, or I do anyway, I, I just feel like it just can't take the place of that oil paint shit, you know? Yeah. I mean, your, your, your paintings you're doing, it's basically, I'm assuming it's your outdoors. Yeah. It's like you see out, yeah. Your backyard. It's like, is it a fucking photo or is it a painting? You know, it's just like, uh, when you it, actually look, look into like you zoom in and all right, this is a painting. These have been really, really educational for me, man, because it, it's, it's like, it's a different philosophy of yeah. painting. You know what I mean? I, I I feel like prior to this, it was I I I've always kind of approached things from an illustration standpoint, and you know where I'm making a representational picture of something and I'm trying to convey a scene or you know people doing something or whatever. And these are nice because you you get to drop all of that out and you're just looking at something and you're going, what does this look like? How can I render this down to the most simple abstract terms possible? You know. It, it, it's it's great because it's forced me to concentrate more on mark making and uh, just being less representational, I guess. Even, even though they're super representational, it's like you said. I mean, right. you, know, you know, people got to, you know, I get that a lot. Like where I'll post something and people are like, that's a photo. I thought it was a photo. And it's it's like they're, they're really not. I mean, you get up on them and they're, they're pretty fucking loose. But it's that... But that's the thing, right? That's like the fun part is trying to figure out how to make something loose look tight from a distance, right? Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, you know, that, it's something that as a painter, that problem in particular has always fascinated me. And I feel like the, the trees have allowed me to kind of indulge in that in a way that I don't think I've been able to prior yeah, you do it in a legit way. I'm a, I'm a person that goes in. Oh, this is a photo that kind of fits really well. <laughs> well, you know, I do that too for work, right? But I mean, you know, this yeah. personal work. I mean, this stuff is the older I get, man. You know, you know, I I, I feel like I kind of scratched that itch, you know, with, with with the transient novel where it was like, okay, let's do a digital passion project, 
you know, that, uh, you know, beat that dead horse for four years, you know, and, yeah. and I think at the end of that, it was like, all right, well, I did that. It was a great experience. I, I learned probably more than I've ever learned doing anything else in my life. But it's also another component to what I learned is the fact that, like, I am a traditional painter, no matter yeah. how hard, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I know 3D. I'm, I'm very, you know, uh, learned in all of that stuff. And I know how to do all this stuff. But, you know, if, if I'm left to my own devices, I just want to get the paint out and, and, and push paint around. You know, I, yeah. I feel like there's just nothing more relaxing for me. Yeah, dude. All right. Uh, another one was knowing all you know now what things would you have changed for learning process or just some things you wish you had known beforehand yeah i mean i think pay your taxes would be right at the top <laughs> of my list on it. Uh, pay your taxes <laughs> you know um things you say come back to haunt you but i i mean you know as far as my career dude you know i i i'm not gonna say that you know, I've had the best career and it's been fucking awesome because, I mean, they're, they're, you know, honestly, there's been points that have been really difficult and, and, you know, hard to deal with. But I also don't think I'd be the same guy and I, I wouldn't be the same artist if I had taken a different path or if I had saved myself some steps. So, I mean, I, it's, it's something I think about middle age really forces you to kind of look back and start reflecting on that first half of your career, you know? Yeah. And I will say, and I, I just recently kind of came to this, on my own this this conclusion that it's like i wouldn't change a fucking thing i really wouldn't i mean i i feel like yes there's been some really terrible experiences and there's, there's been things that you know weren't so great but i learned from those things and they made me better prepared for you know what's coming down the road i guess so yeah i, mean, I wouldn't change anything I, I i think the best way you can look at your career is just like you know, you're going to kind of make these decisions and, and you, the best thing you can do is just commit to them and learn from them. Yeah, I so. mean, we, we kind of uh, touched on that uh, a little earlier is that, you know, anytime you're making a mistake, it's really a lesson for you. And not, unless you have that lesson, you might not be able to actually stumble upon the solutions ever. You mm -hmm. know, you might think that, oh, if I if I decided to whether it's taxes or life choices or even painting, like if I decided to learn this stuff first, that would mean that I'll be better at it. Maybe not. Maybe there's there's uh, there's you know small things and details that you'll be missing out because you ha you failed so many times on just doing stupid things. You actually have learned the hard way and actually made you appreciate what you're learning a little more. You know. Well, you know, I I'm a hard-headed person. I learn the hard way. That's just how I learn. And I know it's not probably the most economical way from a time standpoint. I know that by learning the hard way, I own the information. Yeah. And that I can it's not use hand it. it to you. You're, I'm, you're, you're so, living it. You know what I mean? You, you, you know how to use it because yeah. you learned it the hard way. Whereas if you didn't necessarily learn it the hard way, you know, somebody, someone told you, you know, it wasn't the trial by fire where you know exactly what to do with it. Yeah, for sure. You know? That's true. Um, is there a way? to somehow get both parts of cinematic storyboarding tutorial. <laughs> I purchased <laughs> uh, them about six uh, years ago. I <laughs> can't find files. Oh, that's so funny. Yo, I'm sorry if you emailed me, whoever asked me, <laughs> asked me that question. I'm sorry. So, Vladimir. so the downloads. Uh, you know, we started those downloads many years ago. Uh, I'm like back when YouTube was a new thing. Um, and, you know, it, it, was, it was in effort to help support the gigantic image hosting costs of conceptart.org at the time. Uh, you know, and, and I mean, yeah, we, we start, you know, some people made some pretty good money off of it. Um, I kind of did middle of the road on them, to be honest. I mean, I, I had a couple good months, but, you know, it, it wasn't like, you know, I didn't have any, like, landfalls. Like, I, I, remember, I remember Knox did really good. Chan did really good on them. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it kind of, so what happened with those is they kind of fell into uh, copyright ambiguity. And when, you know, we kind of had our falling out with, uh, with Jason Manley and conceptart.org and everything, I mean, it just kind of, from, from this camp, the philosophy of like, let's just pretend like those never happened. And that's mm. just, you know what I mean? And then trying to get into 
I don't want to try to figure out what the legal implications are. Uh, I, you know, I, I have some of them somewhere on a hard drive buried in a storage facility, you know, um, but, you know, I don't have them handy. And I mean, I don't know. I, I, I tend to look at those, 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 uh, those demo videos is like, kind of like, it was, it's like concept art It was a moment in time, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they'll ever be available again. Maybe. I mean, I'd love to be. You know, a while back, I was talking to someone about it, and I was like, "Man, I would love to just put them all up online and just make them free for everyone, right?" Because I mean, they're you know close to ten years old now, and it's like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to make money off of those things. They, they, you know, so I don't know, man. That's that's not a question for me to answer, because yeah. I honest, I just really have no idea, and I, I don't want to pay, you know, legal to try to figure out what that fucking mess is. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Sorry, sorry. I wish I wish I could offer a more concrete answer, but yeah, I just I just really. It's all don't good. Know. It's all good. Yeah. Um, Dave asked, uh, "How do you think living out in the woods with a barn and and all has affected your artwork versus living in San Francisco and having a studio life?" Well, that's a pretty easy one, right? Because when I lived in San Francisco, I wrote a 240-page book about homeless people. <laughs> uh, now that I live in the woods, I paint trees. So I, I think I think it, it doesn't go much deeper than that, right? <laughs> I think I think I, I'm a big firm believer that as an artist, you know, what you do is you paint, you interpret the world around you, you know, uh, as faithfully or you know however you want to do it, right? And I have always subscribed to that. Uh, I have always used my environment to inspire me, you know, and, and I, I, I was drawn kind of creative energies from, from, you know, wherever my, my situation is, you know, wherever I'm located. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's been the singular biggest one is, is my personal work. I mean, my, my commercial work hasn't changed at all, to be honest. I mean, it's, you know, it's the same thing. Clients right. call, ask you for Just stuff. Dig in and, and do it. Yeah. You know, and you problem solve. Right. But yeah, yeah for my personal work, it's, it's definitely become a lot more, about nature and you know what I'm around here, and I mean I, I think too it's it's like the tone is more serious. You know I I think having a couple kids, middle age, mid career, you know you, you start thinking about things in different terms. You get a little more serious on like what you want to say. You know maybe you know at, at 40 I'm like I don't want to make a jokey comic about a homeless guy anymore. I want to paint these scenes that mean something to me. Yeah. So I think yeah, that would yeah, be the over, over time perspective changes and, you know, yeah. and you're making choices that are suitable for what do you, what do you need out of your life rather than, you know, yeah. what, what is expected gonna, of you? So you're going to paint what interests you always. Yeah, for sure. Uh, someone said, uh, I, I'm just, you know, scribbing through sure. some of the questions. Uh, I, I think we're going to go through maybe two more. Okay. Uh, someone asked, uh, I'm going to answer that quickly myself. But everyone's opinion about social justice warriors, I would say, fuck those. <laughs> uh, fuck those guys. And uh, let's go further. Um, I believe in the first commandment, dude. Or first, uh, not commandment, fuck. Uh, amendment. First, uh, amendment of the uh, Constitution. You know, freedom of speech. So, um, question. Uh, what are your future painting projectos, oil? Uh, seeing your artwork is uh, gone through a very interesting evolution. Just curious of what you will be doing next. I, I guess like, yeah, what are you? you yeah, I, honestly, I don't know. I mean, you know, right now I'm kind of at a weird impasse. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm really deep on a, pro on a on a commercial project right now that's taken up a, a lot. I mean, it's that's a pretty heavy, pretty heavy endeavor. And, you know, so I'm, I'm not even really kind of thinking about personal work at the moment, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, I've, I've always just kind of been, I'm, I'm a big believer in kind of the organic process of just letting these things kind of figure themselves out. I have never been an artist. You know, I'm a big, I'm all about being water, man. It's all about being water. You know, yeah. if, if, you, if you go into your career and you're like, I want to work at Lucas, I want to work on these movie projects. I want to work on this thing. It's like, you know what's going to happen is if you're lucky, maybe you get to do that. And fucking then what? Yeah, and you're going to actually hate it. Then what? You know, yeah. what after that, right? 
I, I have always kind of subscribed to, I am like water. I will be, and I will move in whatever way the, the, the wind takes me, man. You know what I yeah. mean? Whatever container I'm in, I will, I will, I will form to that container. And I think doing that, I mean, has kind of put me on like this weird career path that I've had, you know what I mean? By not having a plan and not having these like set, if I can just do this one thing, then it's, you know what I mean? I don't have a goal. I don't have an end goal. My, my end goal is just to paint shit I want to paint, you know? And, and I, I wish I could be more specific than that, yeah. but you know, I, I can't, it's just, it's just not how my brain works, you know? Yeah, I guess what you can try to do is really like if you're really after something, just try doing it and try to pursuing that idea. Sure. But I mean, don't... That's the thing. I don't want to discourage that, right? There's nothing yeah. wrong with like, setting goals and, and trying. But at the same at, at the same time, uh, sometimes not having a goal or, or having a not even not having a goal, having a less specific goal. Right. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's what I was my... alluding to. Like, instead of yeah. just like, I want to work in films, that's a goal like to pursue. But I want to work for really? Avatar. Guess what? If you go, if you get to work, if you're gonna get fucking lucky enough to work for Avatar, exactly. I can guarantee you're gonna like it for the first few months, and then you're gonna fucking hate it for the rest <laughs> of your life. That's that's how it is with most of the projects. I just finished working on on uh, on Ghost in the Shell, and as much as I loved working that project, halfway in, I was just like, I fucking I cannot do this anymore. Yeah. It's just like it's you you you're happy to do it for the first few months. We're really excited and really you know empowered. Like oh fuck yeah, this is this is my dream, right? Um, but then it's just like, yeah, I kind of want to move on. Like, I kind of want to do different things now. You know, it's like, it's never just the end mean. It's just like, there's always, it's almost like a step by step. It's like never ending staircase where you, you, you reach one step and there's another one and it's just never ending. You're always finding another goal you're, you're after, you know? Well, you know what's, what's cool about not having super specific goals either is like, you know, sometimes you, you'll stumble on a project that like, might not have been your central goal. It might not have been the thing that you wanted, and it could be a, a fucking amazing project. I yeah. totally had that happen before. You know what I mean? Where like I mean, I never, I never wanted to work in the defense industry, but I ended up doing a, a job for DARPA a couple of years back. It was like one of the most fun fucking jobs I've ever had. Yeah. And I'm still friends with the people that, that I worked on the project with, and you know, I mean, it was it was a fucking fantastic. And you know, if you told me back in art school that oh, you're going to do a fucking comic book for the defense industry, I would have been like. I don't want to do either of those things, you know? So, you know, not having a plan can sometimes kind of land you in a, in a really cool position that you yeah. would have ever seen yourself doing. I agree. Cool, man. All right. I, I don't want to hold you up for too, too much longer. Uh, I think it's a good, it's a good sort of like a uh, moment to wrap it up and, uh, yes. and stop this conversation. I know there's <laughs> a few more questions going on. I was just like, uh, we're not able to always go through everything. I'm trying to get, through to most of the questions well, yeah, usually, say, but if you guys have a burning question i mean you can you can, you can dm me on facebook and i'll, I'll try yeah. to reply there you go awesome all right dude thanks for your time man it was it was nice to catch up with you and uh, we should we should talk a little, a little more uh, and whenever you're you're in la just fucking let me know i will yeah, but, yeah if you ever make it up this way dude uh holler at me oh yeah, yeah. we'll do it I want to see your I'll barn. Show you how, I'll show you how to milk our goat. <laughs> 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 That's sure. not code language for anything. I'll literally show you how to milk our goat. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Milking goat is always a. It's always a. It's it's something you can use everywhere and exactly. it has different meanings. Just like, just like Photoshop. Just like <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I was thinking like maybe next thing we should start doing here in our cafe is uh, have uh, our guests try to paint in Photoshop one and see how that goes. <laughs> that would be that. fun. That would be fucking fun. I think, you know, do it at, and do it with the mouse, uh, like Craig Mullins. So exactly. see how, how far you can go there. All right, dude. Uh, thanks for your time, man. Um, yeah, thank you, man. It was good yeah. Talking. I'll talk to you later. And, uh, everyone who joined us, uh, thanks for, for being live. Everyone who was watching this, uh, later on, thanks for watching it all or scrubbing yeah. to the end like an asshole. Um, <laughs> if you liked it, just subscribe. If you don't just fuck it, I guess, you know, and uh, otherwise <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. That's next week. We're having, uh, another guest coming in and it's going to be, I believe it's Andre Louise, who's, uh, who's the founder and, and the guy who's behind the Trojan horse was a unicorn so he's coming back to our cafe we're gonna have him and more to come so 
Thanks, dude. Thanks, everyone. Peace.